You want to support Roller Martin Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roller Martin Unfiltered. By going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com, you can make this possible. All right, folks, let's go to our second story. The Leadership Conference on Civil and Human Rights. They have sent a letter to all United States senators encouraging them to oppose the confirmation of judicial nominees who won't state that Brown versus Board of Education was correctly decided. There's a list of 27 pending nominees. This week marked the 65th anniversary of Brown versus Board of Education. And Robert, we have seen numerous individuals who have come before the Senate, Senate Committee and they won't say that Brown was correctly decided. Now, there's this whole deal of I don't want to, you know, go on record as answering specific questions. But damn, if you can't say that Brown was correctly decided, you have no business being on the federal bench. All right, let, let me bifurcate my answer real quick. So the first part is going to be the legal analysis of this. What the many of the judicial nominees are saying is that because you are asking them to rule on something speculatively, because you're asking them to give their decision on something, that can be used in oral arguments or in uh, Supreme Court and amicus briefs in the future, saying, quoting back to their Senate testimony during their confirmation But hearing. they're not ruling. They, but, they were but, specifically asked, do you believe that Brown versus Board of Education was correctly decided, which ended segregation in schools. That, that That's the case. And, and, and as I said, I'm giving you their rationale for why they are not answering that, because they don't want to be held to an answer in the future on, on these issues. Well, second, like, okay, what, what's second, the answer they're being held to? Yes. Well, well, no, because if uh, let's say that this is a, a hypothetical that I saw in uh, on Law.com a couple weeks ago. Let's say in the future it's a question of, uh, do, do illegal immigrant students get the same rights as American students? Do we issue the same protections for trans students as we do for African American students? And do we cite back to your statements on Brown later on? That's the hypothetical situation there, and that's the reason they don't want to lock themselves into that. However, I do think that these are very intelligent and smart lawyers who should be able to craft an answer that both affirms their commitment to Brown and preserves their ability to have uh, leeway and not be locked into that in, in the future. I think it's an exercise in cowardice for these people not be, to be able to answer a simple question on Brown versus the Board of Education, one of, these, uh, one of the bedrock pieces of Supreme Court jurisprudence from the 20th century. If you can't say you support Brown, then you probably don't need to be on any federal bench. I'm not convinced they actually agree with Brown, Cleo. Exactly. I mean, sometimes people kill me with with logic and breaking down the facts of the matter as if they matter to these people. These people don't want to articulate anything that's going to put a wrench in their power. They don't want to support something that's going to create room for so-called minorities and so-called immigrants to come in here and interrupt their great make. America great again agenda. It's really that simple. Their intellect and their and their legal capacity to the litigate, et cetera, is not the issue. Their position and their philosophy is the issue, and they don't want to do anything that's going to go against their white nationalist philosophy. Well, I, I just think that this is not hard. And the fact of the matter is, uh, these, are, these are largely conservative judges yeah. who are being asked the question, and they won't answer it. 90% of the judges that Donald Trump has appointed have been white men. Mm -hmm. I think one has been African American. Uh, what you are seeing is clearly, Robert, an effort by Trump, by Mitch, McConnell, by Mitch McConnell and Republicans. They want to put largely white That's men, right. far right wing men, on the federal bench so they can be there for the next 40 years. Period. Well, well, this is part of the reason I think people need to start and should have started five years ago paying attention to Mitch McConnell. Because what Mitch McConnell did throughout the Obama administration wasn't just to block Merrick Garland. He blocked federal judicial nominees throughout the entire Obama administration to the mm -hmm. point that when Trump took office, there were over 100 vacant judgeships which had not come to a vote. And by Republicans keeping the Senate and increasing their, uh, their margin in the 2018 midterms, it's going, 
Democrats have to make this their top issue going into 2020, the preservation of the judiciary. Because no matter who wins uh, the House, the Senate, the presidency, if you allow Republicans to uh, place 100 new federal judges on the bench over the course of the next several years, and maybe between three and four more additional Supreme Court justices on the bench, everything else becomes academic. That's the only thing that matters for the next half century of American life. So while we're running around chasing all these issues, we're going to repeal the electoral college, we're going to have a Green New Deal. Every candidate needs to be keen in on this issue of the judiciary because that would what matter not just for our lifetime but for our children's lifetime after us. All right, folks, back to our Golden Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. All right, folks, inviting you to come out swinging and join me for a day of golf at the University for Parents Golf Tournament on Saturday, June 22nd in Southwest Atlanta's Wolf Creek Golf Course. It's a golf tournament with a purpose, a fundraiser for the University for Parents, a program designed to empower parent learners through education, inspiration, and support. This is all tied to Susan Taylor's uh, mentoring program, National Cares Mentoring Program. Now, when you empower the parents, you also empower the children as well. The location of the tournament is 3000 Union Road, and the shotgun start time is 9 a.m. To register, go to www.u, the letter U for parents.org, the letter U for parents.org. Hey, guys, tomorrow, uh, do me a favor when we do this here, uh, put the uh, website at the bottom of the screen here. Uh, it's a little small on that flyer. For more information, call 770-316-3487, 770-316-3487. And I certainly hope to see you there. Now back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered video.